Thank you, James. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for staying for the last session. I know you must be really tired, but I'm here to actually teach you or tell you about my journey of how I improved my energy levels and how I managed to become fit. Um, if I tell you that I work out almost every day, I know you must be like, wow, you probably like, you know, don't eat. You eat like one leaf of vegetables for like every meal or something like that. But I enjoy my pizza, I love my pasta, and nobody believes it when I say I eat at least five times a day. So I'm here to tell you how to get started on your journey uh, to fitness and how that actually affects your perception of yourself and your self uh, and concept. So how many, of you, how many of you here would say that you are fit? Don't be shy, just put up your hands, yeah? Very good, and then, if you say you're a fit, what is your definition of fitness? Do you mind just sharing with me? No, um, I think it's a balance between um, actual exercise physically and mm -hmm. then mentally with meditation and the food that I take, so that works for me. You know what, I think she's going to come up here and talk. I don't need to talk anymore. That's exactly what I'm about to talk to you about. How fitness is not just about your body, but also your mental and your emotional health. How about you? You just said you're fit, right? What is your definition of fitness? You don't need to say the same thing, because everyone has their own definition of fitness. Well, it's quite simple. I wake up in the morning, and I see where I can see the fit outlines of my six-pack. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Round of applause for him. That's being honest, right? See, that's being very, very honest. I mean, everybody has different standards. Maybe I wake up and I'd be like, oh, you know what, I have six packs today, and tomorrow I have four. Okay, that's not too bad. Would you say that's a lower level of uh, fitness? No? That's still fit, right? Okay, very good. So everyone has a different definition of fitness. Some people, for them, it's the ability to push, you no know, bench press, maybe like 100 kilograms. So some people, to so this, it's fitness for them. Or this is like being fit, this is healthy. Other people, maybe this. What do you think? No, not sexy, right? Well, okay, I mean, I think we have been bombarded with all these images of what it means to be fit, a certain way, looking a certain way. And I guess having been on the international stage, people expect me to look a certain way, and they're like, oh, I look at you, you're wearing this, you have like, you know, legs that look like they run 10 kilometers and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, you must be a certain, they put me in a stereotype. So, okay. <laughs> To some people, this means being fit. In the fitness industry, oh sorry, in the fashion industry, this is fit, this is sexy. But we all have different definitions. So I think, you know, for what I can do, I think I do pretty well. Um, I think I'm quite fit, maybe like you, I wake up in the morning, I see if I have a six pack, and I see maybe how many sit-ups I can do. And I think my fitness journey to fitness is, uh, <laughs> what is this? What? <laughs> it is, it is me. It's the highlight of my fitness journey, and I think um, it has, kind of, it was, okay, I mean, this is how it looks like, but on the background, I, I, it was trial and try, I tried and tried again, and I fell off this <laughs> punching bag many, many times. So, again, another thing, I'm talking about image, right? So, what is it like? I'm sure this image is quite familiar to you. The classic Barbie doll versus a real woman Barbie doll. What, do you, what are the differences here? Sorry? Waist-to-hip ratio. Oh, okay, yeah, waist-to-hip ratio. I think the first thing that we see is the significant height difference. And yes, the neck is longer, the, the waist-to-hip ratio, the waist is smaller, the legs are wow, different. And somebody actually went on to build a real-life Barbie, like a life-size Barbie, based on that doll, and this is how it looks. <laughs> so just because people are skinny, it doesn't mean they're fit or they're healthy. This Barbie here is made based on the proportions of the doll that we have all pretty much grown up with. This Barbie has 18 inches of waist, 39 inches of a bust, and she's like, I think more than six foot tall. Is that? humanly possible or is that even fit? Is that considered fit or healthy to you? No, are you already shocked? I mean, I had to do something to wake you up, right? So, is health then and fitness equivalent to weight loss? Just because you're skinny, does that mean you're healthy or you're fit? 
No, exactly, it's not. To me, health is, is fitness, about working out. I think like our, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Paulina. Paulina, yeah, Paulina. Paulina. So Paulina says is, is about being mentally, emotionally, and physical. It's a balance between what you eat or so. So I think that, I agree with that. So to me, health is fitness. It is also about wellness. And eventually, the end goal is to being happy. Who, wants, who here wants to be happy? All of us want to be happy, right? Yay! Cheers for being happy. <laughs> so that's what I mean. Fitness means being healthy. And I know it sounds like a very abstract concept, but let's just try and break down fitness into 10 different elements according to the fitness industry. It is about cardiovascular respiratory endurance, stamina, strength, power, speed, coordination, agility, balance, accuracy, and flexibility. It seems like a lot. And in fact, we actually use each one of these on a daily basis, all in different proportions. We have to balance when we walk. We have to be flexible when we bend down to pick up stuff, when we have to pick up bags, because flexibility is the ability to maximize the range of motion in a joint, whether it's your arms, your neck, your legs. You know, if you go up the steps, how flexible are you to step from one step to maybe three steps up the, on the staircase, right? And then power. You use power whether it's to open, <coughs> sorry, whether it's to open the jar, to push a door, to push your furniture, strength to carry things, to apply force to certain things. Whether you're pushing somebody, you're pushing your way out of a crowd, you're pushing the door, you need strength. And what about stamina? Anybody want to throw me some suggestions of how you can use stamina? <laughs> Did y'all hear that? <laughs> okay. Well, that is one, one way of using because, I mean, it is something that people enjoy, right? So speed. If you're running for the bus, you need speed. <laughs> that works too. But let's just distill it down to the five basic elements. We're not going to be able to focus on all ten elements when you're working out, when you're thinking about your journey to fitness. Five basic elements, I think what we should think about is your body composition. The lean body mass is compared to your ratio of body fat. So body composition, so when we do assessments, when we go for health checkups, they usually will measure our body fat composition. People have different ranges. So according to the Sports Fitness Advisor, it ranges from 14 to 25% for women because we usually have to bear children and also because women have breasts. And 9 to 19% for men. That's considered healthy. The next element of fitness also is endurance. Like I said, when you use less than maximal amount of force to overcome a lower amount of resistance. So when you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. So if you're carrying weights, just a clear example, you're using a light weight and you're doing two kilograms and you do it for 20 times. Can you then use that same weight and repeat it for 40 times? I know I can because my muscles start to tremble and it's I don't have endurance, I might have strength to be able to carry a five kilogram weight, but I don't have the strength to carry a two kilogram one for 40 times. <laughs> the next one, muscular strength. Another thing that we should think about when we're working in our fitness, muscular strength. Ladies, you wanna go shopping, you wanna go for the sale, you need to be able to carry all your shopping bags. That's where your strength comes in. That's why we always say we need muscle, our men to help us carry the bags. Cardiovascular endurance, yes, you're going on a long walk down the mall, walking down the entire stretch of Orchard Road. You will need your cardiovascular endurance because, you know, you're going to walk a couple of times, right? <laughs> Last one, flexibility. When you're going to try and reach for that bag that's way up high on the shelves, you need your flexibility. You're going to have to bend your bend, uh, tiptoe. You're going to stretch. You're going to bend down, pick something out. Even in the supermarket, you have to navigate. You have to move. You have to twist and turn. So I think the last element of fitness, that, which is very important, is flexibility. So how do you start? It seems like I'm telling you, you know, there's all these things, agility, there's balance, there's all this stuff. Pick one element to start with. If you want to work in your flexibility, focus on that. Every day, practice one step, 
push your boundaries. If you, some people can't touch your toes, right? What you can do, just practice every day. Push, push, push. And then eventually, obviously, room wasn't built in a day. So your flexibility is not going to come overnight. If you do that, it's going to harm you. Next one, celebrate every victory. Even if you can move just one centimeter more of your flexibility, you should be happy about that because you are now stronger, more flexible than you were yesterday. With social media and with technology, what you can do to celebrate this victory is to share it with your friends. Whether you're telling your family members, you're writing on Facebook, whether you're tweeting about it, share it with your friends because people encourage you, they will motivate you, and it's positive reinforcement. They'll be like, oh, wow, well done. So it, it helps you feel better about yourself because you're actually trying and you're working hard towards your goal. And for me, I think this one is a, one of the most important things too. Instead of just thinking of health as weight loss, think of health and fitness as your overall wellness. When I started on my journey to fitness, I didn't think like, oh, I wanted to lose weight. Losing weight was not my goal. I wanted a better quality of life. I wanted to be healthier, so I ate better. I ate cleaner. I didn't eat a lot of fried food. I cut out junk food from my diet. And the weight loss just came. It's the same as talking to a lot of entrepreneurs these days. They tell me their goal was never to make a lot of money. Their goal was to change the world. And they wanted to follow their passion. So it's the same thing with health and fitness. If you want to reach your goal, think about overall wellness because that will improve your quality of life. Any questions at this point? No? All right, let's move on. So then, how does this fitness thing relate to your perception of self? What does it then mean? Like I said, breaking it down, being fit is about being, having emotional health, mental health, and the physical health. So we've covered that part about being physically fit. All the different elements, about being flexible, agile, and having your balance, and your stamina, all for maybe sex. <laughs> all other things. <laughs> Let me just share with you a story about my journey at, um, during the Miss Universe Singapore and international competition. So this was taken before I left for Brazil. This was in Brazil in April and in September. So it wasn't an overnight thing, obviously. So the time difference here is about seven months. Every day I had to work out, and I saw the difference you know, month after month, not even just month after month, just week after week, because I put small little steps. And I felt a lot better about myself. Yes, I was happy here. But I knew because I had pushed my boundaries, I had challenged myself to be better. And because I was going on an international stage, I went there feeling good about myself because all these girls have worked out at least the same time as I have. And to know that you're on the same standard as them, I think that does great for your confidence because you know you put an effort to be on an international level. That's just how I relate you know, fitness to being uh, confident. So, Fitness is not just physical, it is also a state of mind because you're challenged yourself and then you feel enriched, you feel empowered. So what can you do then? Make it yours. Because being fit is a state that you can achieve from your mind. So a lot of evidence has suggested that physical activity is correlated or actually does help in mental health. So strongest evidence suggests that physical activity and exercise alleviate some symptoms associated with mild and moderate depression. And at the same time here, improve self-image, social skills, and cognitive functioning. Another one here, general findings indicated exercise is associated with improvements in mental health, including mood state and self-esteem. What about over here? suggests that physical training leads to improved mood, self-concept, and work behavior. Although it has been less clear on cognitive functioning. So why, why, why do you exercise? How do you feel after you exercise? Strong. Strong? 
Shout it out. I want to hear words. Awesome. Awesome. I like that. Fresh. Very good. See, these are positive words you should keep in mind after you finish your exercise. Because for me, it makes me feel faster. Let's all read it out together. It makes me feel. Very good, yeah. I run faster each time I train because you're pushing your physical limits. And be when you do that, you know that you have, when you do run faster, you know that you've actually achieved and overcome yourself. You are your biggest competitor. So what else? It makes me feel stronger. Yeah, I push the boundaries and carry more weight. See, it's so heavy that the weight already fell off. <laughs> it challenges my creativity. Instead of doing the same thing all the time, Find new ways of exercising and working out. Whether you work out with a friend, whether you're working out alone, depending on what equipment you have, it challenges you to always improve and be fresh. Last but not least, I know this is very important to me, it makes me feel happy. How many of you feel happy when you work out? When, you, when you're fit, very good, I like that. And we do it because we want to because we enjoy it. And when you have all of this in combination with your health and your fitness, that just leads to a great positive mental state and overall well-being. So <clears throat> here are some more steps. Just start out slowly. If you have never exercised in your entire life and you want to start, here's how you should do it. Just start slowly, choose something simple that you know you can do but does not make you feel bad about yourself. You know, if you've never actually run a 10 kilometer race, you're not gonna be like, yes, I'm gonna start tomorrow, I'm gonna go and be fit and run a 10K. If you can't run a 10K, walk a 10K. If you can't walk a 10K, walk a 5K. There are always fun runs that are happening a lot these days in Singapore, whether it's a 3.5, whether it's a, you know, a color run that was untimed. I think it's great to start. Just start and always start small and slow. So if you know that you can walk up your, your, your block, just three floors, push yourself just a little bit more and walk five. If you've never even walked, maybe walk one level, all right? So start small and start slow. As your stamina and endurance increase, as it gets easier for you, just challenge and push yourselves further. I mean, eventually you're gonna be able to walk to 18 floors of your story, but I'm not sure if you, you wanna do that, right? Yeah, the important thing is to do it consistently and like the tips that I gave you before, celebrate every victory. So push yourself a little bit harder, a little bit further. This is the challenge. I know everyone's, y'all must be really challenged today. How many challenges did y'all get today? <laughs> a lot, right? So I think this one is, my, I'm gonna start with a little bite-sized cookie. Just push yourself just a little bit harder, a little bit further, a little bit different, but for 30 days being consistent, okay? So whether you want to tweet, you want to Instagram, you want to write it down in a book, one positive line a day about challenging yourself and pushing your boundaries. You know, if you have a fitness goal or if you have something in life that you, you know, I think, um, like Celestine said, you want to achieve something, whether it's your passion, just do something that you've never done previously and tell us about it. I want you to use the hashtag mentally fit and physically fit. Because when you challenge yourself to do things your body has never done or you've never even thought about, you're challenging both your mental capacity and your body. So examples are, you know, I, I ran extra five minutes today or extra five steps. All done. So mentally fit, physically fit. Because you're telling everybody, you're sharing now. So you're getting the positive encouragement that you will be getting, uh, that you need to continue on your journey. And then maybe this one, I resisted dessert today. That's great, if that's your fitness goal and for eating right. How about this one? I'm stronger than I was yesterday. I made my best friend laugh. And these are all examples that you can do, things that you've never done before. Anything, do anybody has examples of what is the first thing now, maybe you'd be like, okay, you know what, I'm gonna switch seats or I'm gonna speak up in a summit if I've never done, done that before. Yeah, so do something different. And that's it for me. Good luck. <laughs>